So we just want to say we thank God for what God is doing in the life of Pastor Huggins. Come on, somebody. And I will say to you, Pastor, that eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, neither get into the heart of man the things that God would do for them that love him. Can we give God praise? Y'all ought to get excited about your pastor. If this is your pastor, there are some portals and there are some things in the spirit realm that God gives us access to. Amen. So let's give it up for Lady Keller. And because you are here looking so beautiful, I need you to give God praise for yourself. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We just want to say that we're excited. We're elephant excited and hippopotamus happy about being here in the house of the Lord today. Amen. We uh, just come out of a great service. My pastor, amen, uh, Pastor Theo Noble, just came in from uh, Cape Town, South Africa. He's been with our church for the last couple of days. And amen, he just made a deposit this morning on yesterday. So we just leaving a high service. So we give God praise. Amen. 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 But I, I just want to say I thank God for Pastor Huggins. And, and we just want to continue to reverence the anointing that's on his life and the work that he's doing here in the city of Greensboro. We both share some of the same thing. Our pastor both was Apostle Otis Lockett. Amen. And I think that Pastor Lockett was so gifted that part of him was placed on every one of his ministers. Amen. And, and, and you can see the quality of ministry in every minister that Bishop Lockett prophesied to and laid hands on. So I just want to say that we're grateful. And some of you saw the service. I saw the service whenever Bishop prophesied to you, even about your attorney before you was an attorney. We saw that service. Come on, somebody. So we just want to say we thank God for what God is doing in the life of Pastor Huggins. Come on, somebody. And I will say to you, Pastor, that eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, neither get into the heart of man the things that God would do for them that love him. Can we give God praise? Y'all ought to get excited about your pastor. If this is your pastor, you should be standing on your feet giving God praise because whatever's on the man of God has got to come down to you. For the anointing falls down. Y'all got to. I said the anointing falls down. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Pastor Huggins, I've always had the uttermost respect for you because you've always carried yourself in such dignity and great representation of the kingdom of God. And I'm excited about your ministry. I'm excited about what God, amen, is doing in your life. I'm excited about what God is doing in this ministry. And I'm going to tell you, I just see great things happening. Now, amen, I'm on assignment today, so please pardon me. I just want to do what God has spoken unto me and give the deposit so we can go and watch the 49ers pull this victory out. Is that all right? Amen. So all of you uh, Dallas Cowboy fans and all you, y'all get to go home and get to see a real team. Y'all get to see a real team. So we're we going we gonna to get y'all out of here so y'all can see this real team do their thing. I, I, I thought I'd find some type of agreement somewhere. Amen. For folks like, no, 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 no. But there's a word from the Lord today, unless I trouble your patience long. Amen. I, I, I have a word that the Lord given me uh, back last year, right before the year went out. God had told me that this year would be a year of kingdom expansion. And he said, Kellen, wherever you go, he said, you need to make a deposit about kingdom expansion. Yeah. And not only are you going to talk about kingdom expansion, but God says to tell you that the spirit of accomplishment shall rest upon your life after today. I got six people that just got it. I said the spirit of accomplishment shall rest upon your life. Whatever's been difficult for you to accomplish, the spirit of accomplishment is going to rest upon your life. Amen, 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 amen. I'm, I'm, I'm the type of preacher that needs a little bit of participation. I come from the country. Amen. And we hunt in the country. And, and, and we put them dogs after them running. We run dogs. And, 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 and I believe that if you talk to the dog, they'll hunt a little better for you. Can I get witness? So, so y'all talk to me. I get on in and get in the thinking and we'll get it. Listen. The 
Bible says we're going to start here in Psalms 78, Psalms 78, Psalms 78, 23 through 25. Amen. How much time do I have, Pastor? Amen. Psalms 78. The Bible said these words. He said, though he had commanded the clouds from above. We're talking about God. He commanded the clouds from above. And he opened the doors of heaven. He opened the doors of heaven. And notice that when a door is open, it means that God is giving you access. Notice the Bible said, he opened the doors of heaven and he rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven and man did eat, watch this, angel food. He didn't say devil food or devil eggs. He said man did eat what? Angel food that he had sent them, amen, to fool. For just a moment, I want to talk from the subject, divine access. Can somebody shout divine access? But let me, we're here today because God has dropped it in our spirit that he wants to, you to understand that he's trying to give you divine access. Access, what is divine access? Divine access means that God is giving you the opportunity to enter into holy territory by the grace of God. There are some portals and there are some things in the spirit realm that God gives us access to by the Holy Spirit as we follow God. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 51, he said, Behold, the veil of the temple was rent twain from top to bottom, and the earth began to quake, and begin the rocks begin to rent. In other words, this is the first time that we see in the New Testament where God is giving man access to heaven. Notice in the Old Testament, the priest would go, he would go in the chamber. He would put around him what's called a robe. I mean, you see, back in the day, they preached in robe, they call them cassocks. And around the cassock, they had a table that goes around the waist. And they would go to the place that's called the Holy of Holies. And they would go in once a year to make the atonement for the believers. That if the preacher was right when he made the sacrifice, he would come back and give them the word in which God gave unto him. But because it was holy of holies and he had that rope around his waist, it means that if he wouldn't right himself, he would die in the holy of holies and they would take the rope to pull him out. So God is simply saying that in this hour, we don't need a priest. Watch this, in the New Testament to take our problems to God because it says in Matthew chapter 25 that the veil of the temple, it was ripped from top to bottom, meaning, guess what, it couldn't have been torn down by man, but God had to do it himself. And when he tore it down, he said, what I'm doing, I'm trying to give people access to God. In other words, God says, I'm giving you the opportunity to enter into holy territory. I'm giving you the ability to enter into consecrated places. But notice what was in the veil in the Old Testament behind the veil that was called the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant there were three things. There was the manna, there was Aaron rod, and there were the Ten Commandments. And they represent several different things. The manna represent the might of God. Because we serve, we serve a mighty God. Somebody say mighty God. We serve a mighty God, a God of all power. A God that has the ability to do whatever he wants to do, whatever he wants to do it. We serve a mighty God. Bible said, lift up your head, O ye gates. The everlasting door be lifted up, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. He's mighty in battle. Regardless of what battle you find yourself in, God has the ability to get you out of it. There's nothing that you go in that God can't get in. The emotion can't get you out. So we see now in the Ark of the Covenant, the first thing was there was the manna. 
And you, you read even in, in, in Psalms where it says, it rained down manna from heaven. It means that when they were in the wilderness, they didn't have nothing to eat. So they would come out of their tents. And, and, and when they came out, God would rain down manna for them to eat. Watch this. It means they didn't have to go look for food. They just had to step outside the tent. And God gave them enough, watch this, to eat. And guess what? Whatever they ate, it was sucked up. Because that's why he said, God gives us our daily bread. He gave you just what you need for the day. Can I get a witness here? And I come to tell somebody, God come today to give you your daily bread. And your daily bread is the bread that's going to allow you to get what you need for the day. Because if you eat well today, you'll be ready for... Manna. The next thing that was in there was Aaron's rod. You know about the Old Testament, Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod was the rod that budded. In other words, Aaron walked with a rod. Come on, somebody. Moses had a rod. You know how he got down to the Red Sea? He said, stretch out your rod. Some call it a staff. So he was stretching out, and, and the Bible said that the waters parted hither and thither. Watch this. So it showed that, that, that there was power in the rod. Come on, somebody. And the, the New Old Testament said to spare the rod. Come on, somebody. And, what, and you spoil, spare the rod and spoil the child. How many know that if you whoop your children, they ain't going to die? That, 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 that's a whole nother message. Cause, Cause we we got to the point we won't put people in time out. Go go put them in time out. Come on, somebody. And, and and them same folk that you put in time out, you got to call attorney Huggins to get them out. But if you would just go ahead and whoop. I, I'm not in friendship. Let me digress. Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod. The same rod that Aaron used, watch this, the rod, even though it was cut from the tree, watch this, the rod also began to bud. So how in the world can a stick still grow when it's not connected to its source? In other words, God is simply saying that, that not only is he a mighty God, but he's a God that's a miracle God. Come on, somebody. In other words, it had to be a miracle, y'all not talking, in order for the rod to grow that wasn't connected to the tree. It lets us know that the God that we serve, he's still able to perform. Third thing that was in the ark was the Ten Commandments stones that they had hewed out of the rock. So the manna represents the might. Aaron's rod represents the miracle and the Ten Commandments represent the message. In other words, God says that if you would follow the message of the Ten Commandments, the first thing that it's going to do is to give you the entry type of access that you need to God. And I come to tell somebody uh, that, that God has what's known as divine access. Divine access, it ushers us into divine intervention. In other words, God said there are some situations uh, that you need him to intervene in, uh, but you got to understand you got to have access to God to get the intervention from God. That's why a lot of times if sinners are praying, unless it's God's will, they don't have access. But for a child of God, you got to know for yourself that if you don't have nothing else, you have access to God. You know for yourself that you can pray. Y'all not talking. You can pray for yourself and that God hears your prayer. Y'all not talking. I understand. Y'all not talking. You got to know that your prayer ain't going to the sinner and falling down, but God hears your prayer. Just somebody says that God hears my prayer.